All right, you built a new home with a quality builder and the city inspector already came by and signed off on it. So why get a private home inspection? After helping hundreds of buyers build homes, I can say, Lord, there are a ton of reasons and five opportunities to bring issues to builders. We're gonna dive in and then we're gonna talk about the five most common defects I see builders make mistakes on. First, people assume new build homes are perfect because they're brand new and they're not. They're built by humans and even with the best of intentions, building a home is a lot of moving parts and I have not come across the perfect home built yet. In fact, I've seen disasters that cost owners thousands of dollars or just as bad. One family had to move out of their home for several weeks while the house was fixed. We're in a time of supply shortages and labor shortages. And I've seen wrong materials used to be fast. I've seen second rate contractors because builders are struggling to get construction crews. So first inspection of the five, do your due diligence before hiring a builder. Just because they're a big name in the community or they have great advertisements or their salespeople are top-notch, it doesn't mean that they are. Google the builder's name plus the word lawsuit. If there's a lawsuit and it's on file, it'll probably come up and before I build a home, I want to know about it. Check glassdoor.com and indeed.com for the builder. So these two websites have employees reviews of employers. Look for keywords and phrases like takes advantage of people. Last one, look at their Facebook pages and groups for reviews and Google. Here's an example of one I found. Blank home builder is a shyster and doesn't build homes to code. They cut corners and just push homes out fast rather than at a high standard. These guys are crooks and I've had several customers crying on my phone. When brought to my manager, we couldn't help them. Guys, reviews matter. Recap, Google the builder name plus lawsuit, Glassdoor, Indeed, Facebook, and Google reviews. You're paying a lot of money, like a lot of money, vet that builder. Second stop on the bus, pre-drywall new home inspection. The structural part of a home is in place. The roof, the HVAC, the rough electrical, roughed in plumbing, but all of it is still exposed. Get a home inspector out there to check and double check all the wiring and plumbing before the drywall goes up, as well as the HVAC ducts and the air returns. In the past, we've seen wires going to nowhere or not connected to a plug properly. Finding issues at this stage is much cheaper and easier to fix than finding them later that could require some sort of a demolition to uncover. That's happened before. Next up, the pre-walkthrough home inspection. After the city inspector has signed off on the home and you're right close to the finish line, usually it's just down to finishing the paint as close to that as possible, but not so close to the closing that the builder doesn't have time to get the repairs done, the city inspector will be sure it's to code, but not necessarily correct. It'll give you a chance to get an inspector in to double check the code work to be sure the appliances are installed correctly and find any damage one contractor did to another contractor's work by accident. Be sure the inspector checks every detail, including doing a sewer scope. I've seen debris like dry drywall and wood and incorrectly installed sewer lines that could cause backups. If that backup is more than a year down the road, it's not covered by the builder's warranty anymore. Next up, walk through with the builder or the builder's site manager. This is done prior to closing and any last small items that need to be repaired are noted. Paint blemishes, hardwood flooring nicks, cabinet nicks, all the appliances that should be on site and installed properly. Typically the builder or the site manager will walk the exterior with you, check the appliances with you, run the HVAC system, showing you that the plumbing works, checking the electrical and double check checking any landscaping items are installed and in good condition, finished like a deck or a patio, and that everything works properly. 70% of people who've built a home miss this one, the one-year warranty walkthrough. Some builders handle issues that come up on a home in the first year themselves, and a lot of them outsource it to a home warranty company because they don't want to have the staff on site. Either way, the builder will give you at the closing a contact person to call about 11 months after the closing, and I bet as you put all that information both in a safe place and on your calendar immediately as an appointment for yourself 11 months out. About month 11 after closing, go through the home and mark with painter's tape all the nail pops, the drywall cracks, the foundation settling issues, literally anything and everything that is not pristine. Provide you didn't break yourself, of course, like your 12-year-old putting a hole in the wall does not count. Call the number, get them out there, and they'll fix anything covered by the warranty, which is just about everything. 70% of buyers forget about this and it costs them thousands in repair work later on because in today's world, contractors are not cheap. Now here are my five most common defects we find in new build homes you're building needs to fix before closing. Common home builder mistake number one, incorrectly installing insulation. This is at the top of the list. I see builders doing correctly. Sometimes it's missing in spots, but worst case, they went right to the edge of the roof line in the attic covering the soffit vents. And what do the soffit vents and ridge vents do? Prevent moisture, which causes mold under a roof. This is a big one to have a home inspector double check when building a home. Common home builder mistake number two, getting crud in the sewer line during construction. Have your home inspector do a sewer scope. I've seen drywall, wood, and other debris get caught in there that could cause back 
backups. And remember, if the backup occurs after owning the home for one year, it's not under warranty from the builder anymore and they're not responsible for it. Common home builder mistake number three, not connecting the bathroom vents all the way to the outside. Not only is it code, as any inspectors often miss it as well, but over time, all that hot, wet air from showers dump into the attic causing mold. And in my parents' case, and yes, this happened to them and the four neighbors on the street, the drywall will fall into the home. It cost them about $8,000 in our case to get the drywall and the insulation replaced, plus the mold remediated. Woof. Common home builder mistake number four, furnace vent pipes are not pitched properly. This pipe is supposed to allow for condensation to go back into the furnace instead of build up in the pipe so the furnace doesn't have to push past it, number one, putting a strain on the furnace, and of course, be a great place for mold to grow. Common home builder mistake number five, overfused circuits. Yup. It happens. I don't even know how. Now check this out. A double tapped AFCI breaker. I didn't know if there was a new rule for this, but the city missed it and the double tapping like this could continually trip the breaker or worse, cause a fire. On this one, I called the city inspector that came out it was a small town in Michigan and he admitted that he didn't even open the electrical box to check it. Not going to mention which city. Guys, this is super important to pay a couple of bucks to get your new home inspected at a few key times before closing. I've seen it happen time and time again where inspectors, given the opportunity, will save the owners thousands of future repairs, increase the safety factor of the home, or frankly, just ease the aggravation factor if the builder has to come back out and rip out and replace improperly installed hardwood floors or a staircase. I've seen both. I'd rather do that during the construction period, not after you moved in. My name is Mike Perna, real estate agent here in Southeast Michigan. I'd be honored to get the call to help you and your family find your next home or sell your current one. Thank you again, and I'll see you on the next video.